Hello, this is a tutorial for Quiver Vanguard, and there is quite a lot to explain in this game, so I'm just going to go as quickly as I can. Um, up at this location, you have a copy of your avatar, where you can see what equipment you currently have equipped. And if you shoot the, um, the blue circles, you'll teleport to those. To draw an arrow, you use the trigger on your free hand, where your quiver is, and then you um, move the arrow to the bowstring to knock the arrow, pull back, and if you hold it long enough, you'll hear a sound effect and your controller vibrates, and that will be a focused shot which does more damage, and you just release the trigger to shoot. You'll see the amount of damage you did as a red number above the enemy, but from the third person camera, um, that number isn't shown, but you'll see it in VR. I'm going to teleport down here, and um, on your bow hand, if you rotate your hand like you're doing a thumbs down and look at the back of your hand, then a menu will appear where you can see the health of the gate, which is a little, little red bar, and you also see all of your stats that you can flip through by tapping the arrows with your free hand. Also, the health of the gate is shown as these red bars beside the gate. And if you're wondering, I haven't started the game yet. That'll happen when I shoot that crystal. The, um, the objective is to survive as long as you can in this infinite wave kind of game. And you lose when your gate's health gets down to zero. There's a pickup right there. There's a couple different types that are um, they have different colors. That one's an electric pickup, so the next couple of arrows that I have are like an electricity trap, and they'll just do damage um, to anything that walks near it. Um, okay, I'm gonna start the game and keep explaining as things show up. I'm hoping to get through about two bosses here, so that would be 20 waves. And um, there's a huge variety of, variety of enemies to explain, and equipment, and elite enemy types. And um, the bosses happen every 10 waves, um, and the waves are pretty quick. So I think this may be like 10 minutes or 15 minutes. The current environment you see is a volcanic texture, and there's different kinds of textures sort of like seasonal environments and every time you come in one of those will be randomly selected but they don't change the gameplay as far as i know they have, that was a headshot and you see a little red effect where the arrow lands and it's a really small box you have a small hitbox it's just the mask of the enemy basically um, anywhere else on the body will do the same damage regardless of hitting the torso or an arm or a leg and if you sh hit the weapon like, like that um, that does the least amount of damage but it, it does do at least a bit of damage to the enemy which is kind of cool now every couple of waves you have three of a pool of three random items and you just pick one of them, or you can hit skip if uh, that's kind of useful later when you already have good stuff that you're wearing. I really like Shard of Raketh. That's an arrow item. So um, any sort of arrow item has a small percentage chance that an arrow will have that effect. So what Shard of Raketh is, um, basically there's a percent chance that if I miss it will um, blast crystals out of the ground doing a little doing damage within a little radius of that location so a, lo a lot of times I'll miss shots and just get it by the feet of the enemy and uh, that item just helps me out in that regard see purple smoker enemies now they're just difficult to see and um, they also mask other enemies in the smoke 
that shattering sound you heard a second ago, that was because I lost my combo. So I missed the shot and uh, and when you drop your combo, you'll hear a glass shattering sound effect. The other type of purple enemy there, they teleport after the first hit, if they're still alive. Here, I'll try to keep that alive. See, he teleported. And it's a little bit frozen, that was a glitch. Now, I guess I'll start talking about elite effects. So any, any enemy can have various elite effects applied to them. They can even have multiple effects at once. There, I just picked up a orange pickup and um, you can see the effect applied here. So the next couple of arrows I get, they just do a radius of damage where they land, basically. Okay, we have two hallowed choices. If an item says hallowed in front of the name, that means it's just better than it normally is. And if it says primordial, that's really a lot better than it normally is. Um, I will take the permafrost quiver. So this just has a small chance of completely freezing the enemy. And so the enemy will stop walking forward or flying forward. Oh, that was an elite type that I just killed. It had a red aura emanating from it and it's basically uh, an area that applies a outward force to your arrow so to kill those you just want to pull back as far as you can because the more velocity the better and then just shoot straight into the aura um, otherwise the gravity effect will push the arrow out pretty easily there's another variant elite type like that, which has a blue aura instead of an uh, orangish reddish one. And the blue aura is an inward force effect. So actually that's like a negative trait on an enemy because it makes them easier to kill. Because your arrow basically gets sucked into the enemy. These flying guys on the ground are um, pretty standard, but later you'll see some of them actually flying through the sky, and sometimes they carry a uh, molten rock bomb, and you can either hit the rock bomb to destroy it, or if you kill the enemy, then the rock bomb will drop onto other enemies, or onto yourself. Okay, I'm going to take the scavenger's mask and um, you want to keep track of what item types you've put on. Oh, there's the permafrost in effect, which is really good on a boss fight. Just gives me more time to kill the boss. And again, I'm getting really lucky now. Okay. And there's the shard of Rakith. I just missed the boss and those crystals because of Shard of Rakith. Okay, so that was Gate 10, and we just had our first boss, which is much harder if he hadn't been frozen like five times by some pretty good luck there. Um, normally, you have to shoot really fast at that boss, and if he gets to your gate, he'll wreck it pretty quickly. So, wave 11, we should start seeing more elites soon, and we'll see even elite effects combined into single enemies later. There's a shield guy. If you do a focus shot on the shield, then the shield will disappear. Or you can try to just graze his head over the shield or teleport behind him and shoot his back. The cool thing about this game is there's often a lot of different ways to kill particular enemies or to respond to their attacks. So for example, um, 
one second. There's one where if I shoot him, the bomb drops, and that could kill me if I was under there, or it would kill any enemies down there. Um, okay, I was about to explain an elite type. Oh, I keep getting interrupted by something cool. That's a charger, and he runs fast if he gets close to the gate, or after the first time you hit him. There's a blue aura guy, and he pulls the arrow inward, see? So, it's just quite easy to aim at him. Oh, I just got um, the effect of the scavenger mask. By getting a crit hit, it's healing the gate. So, if I need to heal my gate now, I have a mask that allows me to do that just by shooting any heads of enemies. There's a nuke pickup, which is the coolest. I'll do that in a second. Or I guess I'll save it for the upcoming wave. So the nuke effect is um, this white ball of gas. And if you hit it, then there's there will be some red sparks that come out of it. And the next arrow that you have, actually it's in two arrows after the next, like it's the next next arrow will be a nuke shot and it just has a giant radius that basically kills everything in that radius so i'm actually going to let a bunch of enemies come down here just to show how powerful and awesome the nuke is i'll wait until the first one gets to the gate Okay, get ready for this. Oh, uh, I guess the frame rate was a little bit low there because I didn't have the quiver window in focus. That's something you'll have to pay attention to. And if you're using Windows, you just want to make sure that you've clicked on the quiver window and it has a thin blue border. And if some other application has focus, then the frame rate will be lower. But I just went through the Steam menu desktop and gave focus back to this app. If you can't tell, the area over by the avatar is my favorite spot because you can see most of the paths incoming. Whoops. But it's smart to um, move around a bit and get some different angles on the enemies. So I'm going to check what I currently have on. It looks like I've got a mask and a quiver and um, I think I have an, yeah, I have Shard of Raketh, if I remember right, on my arrow. So basically I'm looking for any sort of torso item or, um, or glove items. Um, otherwise it's, yeah, you don't want to waste your choices here. So I'll go with the Divine Wraps. Now that is, uh, glove item, which means you press the trackpad on your free hand to give yourself a thing that you throw. Oops. The Divine Wraps makes this bubble, and if you kill anything in that bubble, then, um, then it'll heal the gate. There's a red aura guy, so just be sure to pull all the way back and shoot straight into the aura. Um, you see the green guys, like the green guy I just killed, they, their ability is that they stop walking and they become invincible and they make everything else within a radius invincible. There is a guy with a blue circle effect and anything inside of that blue area will walk faster. So um, if they're escorting a big cluster of enemies, that can be a big danger to the gate. Just if 
If you see a cluster of enemies, I would take out the blue guy first to slow them all down. So, the box there, it does something special in the other Quiver game, but I'm not sure what it does in Quiver Vanguard, if it does anything at all. But in the other Quiver game, it would um, let you resume at a similar gate from where you left off in your best single player game of that week. Okay, I believe that I still need a torso item, so I'm going to take the breastplate of tendrils. And any sort of a chest plate or um, like whatever goes on the torso, it's activated with the trigger on your bow hand. And you see a cooldown timer, which is a blue ring on your bow. Let me focus on this. I guess. The gate got down to like 75% health. Um, so I did cheat a little bit there. Sorry about that. But that guy just has so many shield, uh, rock shields. Basically, if you put your bow close to your quiver, so the knocking hitbox overlaps the quiver hitbox, then you can just press the trigger quickly. But the thing is, these arrows don't fire very far and they're very weak because they have low velocity. Um, okay, now I have all item types, so I can choose to pick other things. Oh boy. So I just took a different chest plate, which is the Seeker. Oh, and I just wasted it there, but it'll recharge here. So the Seeker Vest, when you activate it and you hit an enemy, then it seeks out other enemies nearby and also damages them. There's a purple sparkling elite. If you shoot him, he returns the fire and you can shoot his projectile or physically dodge it or teleport away from it. Um, I can't remember if I explained the seeker mask. Yeah, I think I did. It's healing the gate, which is nice. Oh. And I shouldn't forget that I have this um, generation orb. Boom, I killed something in that orb and it healed the gate. Oh no, I couldn't see into that smoke very well. I'll shoot the rock bomb on that or not. There we go, just to show that you can do that. Oh, this guy is strong. He had a red ball above his head, which means he has more HP. Um, there's a shield elite. Also, he has a red ball, so we're starting to see elite combinations now. You have to use a focus shot. Thank you, Permafrost Quiver, for freezing him. And basically, um, any focus shot will destroy a shield. All right, what we got on? Um, I'm not making very good use of the regeneration gloves, so I'm gonna swap them out for molten, gauntlet, ga molten gauntlets, which is a really powerful orb that you throw. Um, if you see hallowed in front of an item, it means it's better than normal. If you see primordial, then it's much better. I can't remember if I said that already because I tried recording this a couple times already. Swamp Arrow. I love these. I'll show off my Molten Gauntlets probably on this wave. Oh boy. 
Uh, I like to call the big orange guys cows. And that one has an elite effect that slows down time inside the bubble. So you just have to lead the shots a lot more so that they walk into your arrow. Uh-oh. The guy is shielded. Better back up here and get a better angle. There's a teleporter. Oh no, 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 no. Thank goodness. That guy almost put up a shield right at the gate. Molten gauntlet time. Boom. Oh man, I can't reach. Oh no, 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 no. That is the end. They have gotten to the tree of life. Well, that is Quiver Vanguard in a nutshell. Your final score has the whole number, which means how many waves you survived. And the decimal is um, just a small score within that final wave. Um, if you wanna learn about more stuff, I really recommend that you go into multiplayer and just talk to people and experiment, try to play with all the items and just learn what they do. Don't worry about playing well until you understand what all the effects are. So thanks for watching.